Welcome back to Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to discuss three major cancer types of the integumentary system and talk about the effects of them and what layers they correspond to in the epidermis. So first of all, here is a micrograph image of the epidermis, and here's an artist's rendition of it. Remember that from superficial to deep, we have the stratum corneum, the stratum lucidum, the stratum granulosum, the stratum spinosum, and the stratum basal. Now, logically speaking, the two layers that should have the most cancers associated with them would be the stratum basal and the stratum spinosum. And that's because cells of these layers, particularly of the stratum basal, still have their mitotic activity. As you go further from that, more superficially, these cells up here have lost their mitotic activity, and particularly in the corneum and lucidum layers, they don't even have a nucleus to divide in the first place. And so, theoretically speaking, the spinosum and basal layers are going to be associated with the greatest risk of cancer, and that's exactly what we see. So there are three major cancer types of the integumentary system, and those are basal cell carcinomas, squamous cell carcinomas, and a malignant melanoma. So basal cell carcinomas are the most common type, and they arise from the cells of the stratum basal, which is why they're called basal cell carcinomas. Then we have squamous cell carcinomas, which are going to arise due to cells in the stratum spinosum, particularly keratinocytes in the stratum spinosum. And then we have malignant melanomas, which are going to be the most deadly type because they metastasize very easily and grow very rapidly. And these are going to be cancers of melanocytes, which again are in the basal layer, the stratum basal of the epidermis. Okay, let's break these down a little bit more. Now, basal cell carcinomas, which are depicted right here, are going to be the most common type of cancer of the integumentary system, but fortunately they're the least malignant. Okay? Um, and like I said, they're going to arise from cells of the stratum basal. And that makes sense because these cells are the keratinocytes that are the most mitonically active. And so they're going to be the ones with the capacity to divide. And if that division of the cell, that is mitosis, becomes aberrant, then they'll become carcinogenic but these are also easily removed, and they're the least malignant, okay? meaning they're the least rapid to spread into the lymph nodes. The second type, as I mentioned, is a squamous cell carcinoma, and this is going to be a cancer of the keratinocytes in the stratum spinosum. Now remember, the stratum basal is going to be the layer with the most mitonic activity. That's why the basal cell carcinoma is the most common. But the cells of the stratum spinosum, these keratinocytes, particularly those closest to the stratum basal, they still retain some of their mitonic activity, although it's not as much. And so that's also why the squamous cell carcinomas are not as common, because these cells don't divide as much. But if you develop a squamous cell carcinoma, it's more dangerous than a basal cell carcinoma because squamous cell carcinomas metastasize very easily to the lymph nodes if they're not removed. And so because of this, early detection is the best method to prevent them from metastasizing. Because if you detect them early, then they can be removed quickly, which allows a good chance of being cured from it. Now, these cancers are thought to be sun-induced. So if you spend way too much time in the sun, remember that UV light from the sun is able to penetrate through these skin cells and it will hit the stratum spinosum cells. And that can cause their DNA to mutate and that's actually how they become carcinogenic. Cancerous, that is, okay? The last type of cancer is what's called a malignant melanoma or just a melanoma. And you can shorten it to melanoma because it implies that it's malignant. And these are the most dangerous of all skin cancers. They are cancer of the melanocytes, the cells that generate melanin in the stratum basal layer of the epidermis. Now, a malignant melanoma can arise independently or it can arise from pre-existing mole, also called a nevus, as we discussed in the previous video. So it can arise either way. But if it does arise, it will metastasize even more rapidly than squamous cell carcinomas, metastasize that is the lymph nodes and blood vessels, and that's what we mean by spreading. So it does it very quickly, and they need to be removed ASAP, as soon as possible. Okay? Now, a malignant melanoma, detecting it is done by something using the ABCD rule. Okay, so with the ABCD rule, A stands for asymmetry, B is border irregularity, C is color, and D is diameter. Okay? So with asymmetry, if the spot on the person's body is asymmetric, 
then it's very likely to be a malignant melanoma. Okay, so that means that the two sides of the mole do not match. Okay, also border irregularity, and this one right here very specifically exhibits border irregularity. That means that the borders are not smooth. If you look, you see kind of uh, serrated edges on this side. There's actually a spike that sticks out right here. There is definitely border irregularity here. It's more obvious than the asymmetry is. Also, color. If the mole itself has different colors on it, different pigments in different areas, then it's more likely a melanoma. For example, right here it looks a little bit white, here it's black, and then here it's kind of a reddish brown. That is a sign that you've got a melanoma. And then also, if the spot itself is larger than six millimeters in diameter, very likely a melanoma. This one is certainly larger than six. In fact, uh, between this three and this four right here, that's actually one centimeter. And so this one actually looks to be closer to 20 millimeters, two centimeters or 20 millimeters. That's much larger than six. And so if you've got something that satisfies any of these, you probably want to get it looked at, especially if it's satisfying more than one. One thing I also want to mention about the border irregularity is that's also to distinguish it from a regular mole. If we go back to the previous uh, set of slides right here, we notice that this nevus does not appear to have border irregularity. It also does not appear to have uh, asymmetry by any means. Okay? It also doesn't have any differences in color, really. Okay? So this would not be considered a melanoma. But comparing it to this, we see sharp differences. And so this would have to be removed as soon as possible to prevent it from metastasizing rapidly into the lymph nodes and the blood vessels, in which case then the cancer is spread and you would require chemotherapy and irradiation therapy, which is not good. All right, so hopefully this gave you a good understanding of the three primary cancers of the integumentary system. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you very much.